Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna paint a bear. Let's get started. So for today's painting, as Andley said, we are painting and drawing a grizzly bear. So I've already done a practice run of my grizzly bear here. And what I have is called a grid. I've drawn a square and I've divided that into four equal squares inside of the big square. And grids are actually really helpful for drawing because you can just focus on what's inside of each tiny little square instead of the whole thing all at once. So that sort of makes your life easier, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So I've drawn squares or grids on each of our watercolor papers here. And today I'm using my Fluid 100 cotton watercolor paper. And I've taped down the sides just so we get nice clean edges and just to keep our paper from wandering away. Each of us has a Sharpie, a pencil with an eraser, and a watercolor brush. They're size eight round brushes. We have paper towel, water jars, and then for our paints today, we're gonna be using liquid watercolors. So we have a yellow color, we have a green for the grass, black and brown for the bear. So those are all our materials. Are you ready to start drawing? Yes. All right, I'm gonna put our little sketch right here so we can see that as our guide. Grab your pencil. I think we should start with the bear's head. Do you see a particular shape inside of the head? Mm -hmm. What shape do you see? A circle. It definitely looks like a circle. Now let's just take a look at our first square right here because that's where the head's going to go. And does the head touch the corner of this square or no. is it a little further away? No, not at all. Yeah. So we're going to draw the circle. It's going to come below the square a little bit and come around like two thirds of the way across the top. So maybe about to here. So if you want to put a little dash for where the top of the head goes, that's a great place to start. That's where the top of the circle is going to go. And then one edge of our circle comes almost to the side. Like this close. Pretty close. And the other side is a little further away from the edge of the square. See how it's further away? So now we've got three little dashes on our paper. And what we can do now is connect all of those marks, draw lightly so you don't have to erase so much, but to create a circle shape for the head. There you go. Now for the ears, we're just going to add on these upside down U shapes <laughs> for the ears. Why don't you try it? All you have to do is add those ears and suddenly it already looks like a bear, huh? And then to make the body shape, do you see how there's this curve coming down? It goes a little past into the second box over here and comes down about halfway in the middle of this box. Yeah. So watch now. I'm going to start in the middle of my ear because there's some of his back comes up high, doesn't it? Almost like a hunchback. And I'm going to take that curve all the way past that line a little bit, down to about there. Nice, that was a really good strong line. Now let's connect the front legs to the grass. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of my circle here and I'm just gonna draw a curve coming down like that. Yeah, and then the other front leg just kind of runs parallel to it in the same direction. It's like connecting it. So you've got a fat leg in the front and a skinnier leg that we can't see as much of behind. Now for the basic shape of the back of the bear, I'm going to start here in the first square and then loop around and almost touch the back square, almost touch this line. Nice. <laughs> Now we're going to connect that line almost to the bottom corner of this bottom right square. We're going to curve it in a little bit like that. So his leg comes in towards his head almost slightly. Like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice curved body. And then for the hind leg, we're going to start almost to the top of this fourth square right here and just make a curve down like that. So he has almost this big fat knee. Good. You can bring it down even a little further. Like, so it's as long as the front legs almost. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's touch up the head. We want to add a few details to that bare head. So for this snout shape, do you see, it kind of almost looks like a U, right? But instead of the sides being straight, the U curves in towards the center. So in the middle of his head, we're going to make a little dot right in the center of your circle. 
that's going to be where his eye line is. So his eyes are going to go on either side of that little dot, but that's also where we're going to start our U shape. So on the side of your center of your dot, draw a U shape curving down and then back up. And do you see how I touched the bottom of my circle with the U? Okay. And that's his big bear muzzle. Good. Now you want to make your U shape a little skinnier towards the middle like that. Okay, so next we're going to draw the eyes. Now, like I said, in the middle of your circle, we drew that little dot. The eyes just go to the left and the right of your circle. You can draw the eyes as a circle shape, or you can make them like that, however you want to do your eyes. I'm doing a little circle with an upside down smile over the top for the eyelid. See how there's like an upside down U over the eye? Good job. Lots of detail in yours. See? Good. All right, for the nose, let's draw a large circle right in the middle of the muzzle and touching your bottom line of your square. Make it really big. Okay, and that's gonna be black. Now for the mouth, we're just gonna do a little line right at the bottom there for a little smiley mouth. Like he's confused. Very good. So the last detail is if you want to add a little bit of fur. Now this is a little bit more challenging to make fur markings with your pencil. It kind of looks like little sharp jagged edges and you don't have to do this if you feel like it's too hard but we can just add a little bit of fur and then some grass which is a lot like the fur but a lot bigger and sharper yeah and taller and we can also do this when we do the sharpie over the top if you want all right so we can also do this with the sharpie because we'll be erasing the pencil afterwards anyway okay grab your sharpie and let's outline now watch when i do the outline I'm going to do kind of little separated markings to show how fuzzy the side of his face is. And you can do that on the top of his head too. And then outline his little ears and then make an inner portion of the ear like that. Can we fill in his eyes or ears? Yeah, actually, if you want to, you can fill in his eyes and you could leave a little highlight if you want in the middle. I think highlights, which is when you just leave a light spot, a reflection help the animal look more realistic, don't you think? Yeah, and cute. So just outline your drawing. You can add some fur or just outline the pencil marks that you already made. Totally up to you. Then once you're done with your outline, you can erase all of your pencil marks. I'll include a link in the description below where you guys can download this exact sketch so that you can print it and copy it for yourselves. Looks really shiny. He's super cute. He looks like a bear for sure. So while Ansley is finishing up her Sharpie, I'm gonna squeeze out some paints onto the palette. We're gonna be using lots of brown for the bear's fur. And we'll be using some black to paint really dark brown fur. And we're gonna use a little of the yellow for some of the light brown fur. And for the grass, of course, we'll need some green. And this is actually really dark green, so we'll probably mix it with the yellow to make a pretty grass green. Now these liquid watercolors are highly pigmented, and so we'll probably need to add a little bit of water to make them not quite so bright. That looks awesome, yay. All right, so grab your paintbrush, make sure you have paper towel, and your water nearby. And oh, did you want to erase your pencil marks first? Yeah. Okay, I'm I'll help you with that. <laughs> we are ready to paint. So take your paintbrush. We're gonna start by dipping it in the water. Whenever you're working with watercolors, of course you need to have water on hand. So I dip it in the water and then I pull off any excess water on the edge of the jar. And then with the water that's in my brush, I'm gonna kind of pull some of that yellow paint up and mix a little bit of water into it. I want it to be really, really light yellow. Okay, do you wanna grab some? And we're gonna start with the bear's head. And actually, let's just paint that light yellow all over his body. That's gonna be the lightest color in his fur, is this yellow. You might be thinking, why are we painting him yellow? 
<laughs> That's not a yellow bear. <laughs> It'd be funny if there was a type of bear that would be yellow. It would be. <laughs> So we just have a Google image of a bear in front of us on the computer, and that's what we're using to kind of copy the colors. And Ansley made the observation that his muzzle and his snout are light in color, so she's leaving hers white. It's a really great idea. Beautiful. The next thing is gonna be brown. So once again, I'm gonna take some water from my water jar and pull some of that paint up into my palette, mixing in a little bit of water, making my paint super juicy and rich on my brush and wiping off any excess so it's not super watery. And then I'm gonna take the brown and I'm gonna paint in the sides of his face all the way up to his muzzle. You wanna try? Mm -hmm. So we're coloring in our bare brown, just leaving the muzzle light colored for now. And if you want your brown to be a lighter color even, if it's still too dark, just add a tiny bit of water and you'll see it's a little lighter on the paper now. And you can also remove it on your paper towel like that if it's still too dark. Now the ears are gonna be black, so we'll come in with black in a minute on those. And then you can paint in the body where you see brown. Most of the bear is brown, isn't it? And if you're ready to add black, make sure you don't have too much water in your brush and then just scoop the black right out of the palette and you can paint the ears. I'm trying to paint a little bit of fur on there. With just these short little quick brush strokes make him look kind of fuzzy. And then we're going in with black and painting those ears. I'm leaving a little bit of the yellow showing around the edge so it looks like he's got a rim around his ears. You're mixing the brown and this yellowish color together to get a nice juicy color for the, for the snout. Now you can take the black and you can darken up any of the fur that you want to be darker. Like in the bottom part of his legs, he, the fur gets almost black, it's so dark. But look at how I'm using my brush and I'm doing these little flicking motions upward. And that, so holding it so that the point can make little skinny lines, you see that? And that's gonna make it look like fur. So not big fat lines, but skinny little brush strokes for fur. Mm -hmm. We have lights and darks and that makes it look 3D and more lifelike. And when you're painting furry animals, you wanna move your brush kind of as if you were petting the animal in the direction the fur is growing. So here I see kind of this, the fur is sort of just straight up and down, and here it's kind of coming in towards the body. That's kind of an advanced technique. <laughs> yeah, kind of a bit hard. That's okay. So how about we paint the grass next? I'm gonna mix up some yellow and green. I take some of that green and just mix it up with the yellow right here. Why don't we just use all the yellow because we don't need it anymore. And that makes a beautiful grass green. This is a little bit tricky. I want you to take the tip of your brush and make a really skinny little line like this with your grass, with your green. Okay. You wanna try that? My so brush. make sure there's no water in your brush, that it's just damp. Yeah, look at those skinny little grass lines, nice. Make mine a bit. Pointy. That's good. Grass is pointy. Yeah, and if you want to paint the whole foreground green, you can. I'm going to dab in some of that golden yellow that you mixed up for some ground in front of him. And you can flatten your brush like that and just sort of dab it on the dry paper. And that looks like ground too, doesn't it? Looks like he's just hanging out in a clump of grass. <laughs> and I'm taking some water and mixing it in with the green so I have a lighter green color. And make sure you don't have too much water in your brush. That's why I'm removing some of the water on my paper towel. And then if you want to add some sky, you'll need a blue for that. I guess we don't really have blue, do we? But I'm just gonna add some water into my green and pull that color all the way up into the background, just dipping in the water with a little bit of green that's still in my brush and it's making a nice light green background. I'm gonna actually take some of that green and black and mix those together. Mm 
make some pine trees. But you have to have a wet background for this to work. I'm gonna try adding some trees. You have to let it dry for just a second. Right now there's puddles on it, you see that? So when there's a lot of puddling in the, in the paint, if you add more paint, it's just gonna go, <laughs> it's just gonna explode. Does that make sense? Because it'll flow wherever the water's going. But if we let it dry so that it's just a little bit glossy and not a puddle anymore, then to make these trees, you can just grab some of your green and black and mix them together. And then you can just go blop, 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 blop and drop it in where you see a tall tree where you want your tree to go. Mm-hmm, pretty. It looks just like a fading out tree. I like that. That's so pretty. Love that pop of bright green. Good. Now, before we add any more effects, we're gonna have to make sure that those are completely dry if we wanna add spatter or anything like that. Do you want to do spatter? Yeah. <laughs> we always want to do spatter around here. All right, but we're going to let those dry first. Okay, we are ready to add a little bit of spatter. This is not necessary, but it's just fun. That's why we're doing it, right? Right. <laughs> so you're going to want to grab your paintbrush again. We cleaned our, or we replaced the water in our jars to get some fresh water to keep the colors pure. And I'm making sure my brush is really wet. It's very wet and if you see on my paper towel, quite a bit of water still in there. I'm taking my wet brush, grabbing some of my yellow paint. The reason we want it wet is so that the paint releases from the brush really easily. And then you can take your fingers and just tap your brush a little bit like that. Don't go overboard. <laughs> Sometimes less is better as she continues to spatter. <laughs> All right, let's take a look and see what they look like without the tape. I love this because we get nice clean edges. There's our finished bears. That was such a fun project. I love how your bear turned out. Thank you. Great job. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and hit subscribe if you're new here. Bye, thanks for watching.